Well, we're up bright and early today, uh, fixing an issue that this WRX has had from day one, which is, if you want to turn the camera around and show everyone the sun, that we feel like we're in a big fishbowl in this car. So we've got the right look in the exterior, we've got the right stance, and um, kind of all the little bits that we've taken care of along the way, but we've neglected the tint on this car, which is something a lot of people do right off the bat. Um, so two at yellow is gonna help us out, throw some tint on this car, and um, we'll get it looking a lot better, hopefully, by the time it's all done. I guess I don't have to show you how bad the standard windows are, but perfectly see-through. Getting after it, your G35 first thing in the morning. <laughs> Speaking of getting after it too, I got after it a little bit too much and it cracked our lip on this road, which you think I would know better driving a very low car, much lower than this. Um, so I guess it's new lip time. So we're all wrapped up and just in time. It is a nice sunny day and we've got brand new tint on this car. It obviously looks awesome. You guys can see it. And the work that the two did was nice and quick, under two hours for this whole thing. He's really got the process down. So I gotta say thank you once again. Yeah, man. Appreciate the support. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure this won't be our last car getting tinted by you. Look forward to working with y'all every time. Awesome. All right, appreciate all right, it. Yellow, great shop. If you're local, check them out. We're getting back to our shop. We're gonna keep going on this car. So as you guys just saw, Art and Clinton took the car to get the windows tinted and it looks great. We just got it back. It's a total night and day difference. Definitely gets rid of that fishbowl feel. Since we got it back, we were thinking, what else can we do to this car? We are currently developing a bunch of parts for it, as you guys probably assumed. Uh, but we figured we would go through our parts list that we generated earlier and we were thinking about what would fit and what wouldn't fit. And we realized that we never threw a pitch stop mount on. So we are gonna be doing that today throwing our pitch stop mount on. So for those that are unfamiliar, the pitch stop mount is essentially like the rear upper motor mount. So it connects the top of the transmission to the firewall to prevent, as the name implies, the pitch of the engine. So this is a billet unit which replaces like a fiber reinforced plastic unit, which from the factory is probably fine, but this is gonna definitely stiffen up that rear mount, make less movement in the engine, and it's just gonna translate to a better feel. So to get to it, we need to remove the top mount, which is one, two, three, four, something like eight 12 mil bolts and one weird little clip that they decided to integrate onto the 22. Should be pretty easy and straightforward. And then once we get it off, you'll see uh, it's just two bolts to replace the pitch stop once you're in. So. So this is a new flex coupling type scenario here that's held on with a spring clip. So basically this piece has two notches that interface into the lower part of the charge pipe and this clip secures it all. So this is something new for Subaru. Uh, we're likely to see it continue on in most of the new stuff with turbos, but all you have to do is pop it up onto this little rest and then there's another one underneath you have to do as well. So once you have that, it's popped up. This part should come right off. We already loosened these, so the whole intercooler is ready to come out. Now that we have the top mount removed, we definitely gained a lot of access to this factory pitch stop. As you can see, it's 
a plastic type composite material and pretty weak looking. Um, I know the engineers probably did their job when designing it, obviously to make it strong enough, but we're gonna replace it with this machine billet aluminum version with some stiffer bushings and that should help keep the pitch of the motor in check. So as easy as that, we have the old one out, compare it to the new one here. Definitely looks better, even though you won't see it under the top mount, but this I-beam design is definitely gonna increase this rigidity back here, and it's as easy as just sliding it back in. So now that we've got the pitch stop mount installed, you can see just how easy it is. Probably the easiest one we've ever done. It's a total of seven bolts to get top mount off and the pitch stop out. Put the new one in, two bolts, throw the top mount back on, and you're done and dusted. So pretty much everyone else did the heavy lifting on this episode to install the tent. It looks awesome. Corey went in and test fitted the pitch stop mount. We verified that it does fit on the 22 plus chassis. Super easy install, super nice modification, and uh, really a good first mod for a lot of 22 plus owners. Now, all that's left to do is to throw that top mount back on. Fortunately, Subaru has made it really easy to get that on. It's only gonna take a few minutes. And then I think I'm gonna wrap this episode up and I'll tease a little bit about what we're gonna do in the next one, which involves adding more power to this car. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to our page, share it around. That would do us a huge favor. If you are Grim Suite supporters, which I know you are, please help, help us out in that way. Also, stay tuned for the next episode. I know this one was a little bit shorter, not as much content. That's because we are planning some big things for the next one. I did mention we're gonna add some power to this car. We've got a plan and a way to do it, thanks to this little kit right here. If you know what this is, you know. Otherwise, do a little research, and we'll see you in the next episode. If you let me put it down, you when we get home, if you let me put it down.